All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I think it's time. We've got a, a few folks here uh, from the community. We've got some school board members and we have some staff. So I want to, um, before we get started, um, introduce a couple of folks that are here that um, are really important to the school system. Uh, not to say that everybody isn't important to the school system, but wanted to start with Greg Anderson, our chair of the school board, and I'm going to let him say a few words in here, here in just a second. Um, we've got Phil Reitinger, who's also a school board member. Uh, Shannon Litton is here, school board member. Laura Downs, school board member. And Shauna Russell, school board member. Um, and we're really excited to have them here. And then a few folks that have been sort of integral in pulling um, our budget together. Um, first and, and foremost, Kristen Michael, our chief operating officer. And Michelle Kopek, our budget director, is here. We also have our chief academic officer, um, William Bates, is here as well. Um, and so we're really pleased to be able to spend a little time this evening talking about our budget, the development process, where we are, and sort of next steps. But before we do that, I want to uh, give Greg Anderson, our board chair, just a second to say hello. Um, Greg, uh, we're actually recording this session so we can put it up on the website. Um, so I will hand you the mic so that you have a chance to be heard. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Noonan. I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of you for coming. Um, we, we're here to hear what your questions are. You're here to get a chance to see uh, Dr. Noonan's proposed budget and ask your questions, and we on the board are here to hear your questions. It'll help us with our deliberations about the budget over the coming month, uh, because on February 18th is our scheduled vote for our budget, uh, and we want to hear what you think about it. And um, so I want to say, Sean Russell, our vice chair is here, um, and Sean and I are definitely listening, uh, and I know all of our other members are listening, and uh, being recorded, and thank you to John for doing that. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, school board members, I will uh, just say up front uh, that you have seen this presentation before, <laughs> as you know. Um, you know it well, I think, at this point, um, but I would invite you to sort of reflect and think about it as well as I go through it. Um, but it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege this evening to be able to share with you our, our school systems budget for FY21 here in the City of Falls Church. Um, this is a, a good news story, I think. Um, I had, had said to the board and, and to some other folks along the way, um, in my, uh, this is my ninth year as a superintendent in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and in those nine years, this is likely the best budget, not likely, it is the best budget I've ever had an opportunity to put together. Um, I think it's very reflective of the core values and the beliefs of the community. Um, it's fiscally responsible and uh, sort of meets our general needs um, as designated to the superintendent. Uh, each year by code, I have to support a, or propose a budget that is um, a needs-based budget to the school board. So um, this evening, what I'll do is I'll go through it. Um, if you have questions along the way, I'm happy to answer those. If you want to wait till the end, we're happy to answer those questions as well. Um, but we're very flexible, and uh, I'll also call on Kristen Michael and Michelle Kopek to be part of the uh, questioning, um, question and answer portion as well. So with that, um, let me just start um, by saying, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we start out all of our presentations with is, is jumping back to what is our mission and what is our vision and what are our values and what are our goals here in the City of Falls Church. And um, you'll see on this slide a couple of pieces. One is the mission statement. Um, the other is our IB continuum, the work that we do pre-K through 12 around the International Baccalaureate program. We are a K-12 world school system, continuum school system. Um, we're one of now eight in the country. Um, nine? Nine. And John is holding up nine. They must have just uh, gotten someone else. But anyway, one of nine systems in the country that have that designation. Uh, and on the left-hand side are those skills and body of knowledge that we hope that all of our students will leave uh, our school system with that really reflect the learner profile of the International Baccalaureate program. So being open-minded, principled, caring, risk-taking, knowledgeable, communicator, reflector, inquiry, uh, inquirers, balanced, and thinkers. But the piece that I want to um, just linger on for a second is this notion of what is our mission statement. Um, and here, um, you know, it, it could be an all-purpose, um, all-world mission statement, but I think ours is, is rather unique insofar that it talks about one being student-centered, innovative, and inclusive, but it also talks about us becoming the premier international baccalaureate school system uh, and creating a personalized environment that meets every student's unique needs here in the city of Falls Church um, and then supports that notion of being responsible, caring, and internationally minded. I think, uh, I believe that we have a really great opportunity here in the city of Falls Church to be able to do this work of our mission 
uh, primarily because of our size. Um, we are about 2,800 students, uh, pre-K 12. We know our families, we know our students well. They do matriculate as cohorts, so we get to know them very young and watch them all the way up as they go through our schools. And so having that kind of unique relationship and positionality with the students we serve is really quite exciting. Um, this is our uh, placemat that I think most everybody in here has seen, but it is sort of a graphic organizer uh, that helps us remember what is the work that we're really focused on as we go forward this year. Um, and so the three big pieces that we're paying attention to are the, is the notion about IB for all, and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes, a caring community and culture, and closing gaps. Um, and all of that is uh, sort of weaves together to create our working process and our, our programs that we put together for our students to ensure that we're meeting all of their needs. Um, and all of that, again, sits on that learner profile of the International Baccalaureate. Uh, we have a, a strategic plan that's a triennial plan um, that actually goes through this year. Um, there are five priorities within that plan that uh, have not only sort of high level, high leverage, primary goal alignment pieces, uh, but also then have work plans underneath it. And that's available on our website. And oh, by the way, everything I'm sharing with you tonight is on our website so you can see it. But these work plans become directly aligned to the placemat and, and how we achieve our, our goals. Um, we are a high performing school division. This is one example of a number of examples that, in, that are indicators externally about how we're doing as a school system. Um, it, uh, again, you know, we expect a lot of our students, so uh, speaking to standards of learning assessments is one thing, um, but I think it's important. So here you'll see um, our pass rates over time for the last several years, and then this last year, the 2018-2019 um, school year. For the first time in four years, all five of the core academic areas that were assessed within the standards of learning um, we're at a 90 plus or, um, pass rate, which we're really excited about. Um, the state pass rates are here on the right hand side. Um, and again, this is, um, this is a great place to start for us in the aggregate. Uh, we still, as we look at our disaggregated data, and we look at our students in poverty, we look at some of our students who are in ESAW, we look at some of our special education students, when we talk about meeting the needs of all of our kids, um, we still have some gaps there that we need to continue filling and this budget helps us do that in a number of ways. Uh, this is a new chart that we've added this year that I think um, may be of interest to you. Um, the left-hand side is the Falls Church City Public Schools. The right-hand side is the state. Um, the dark blue are the students who have uh, achieved an advanced diploma, which means that they've continued their work in mathematics, science, in English, and history, a four-year sequence all the way through high school. That's actually not required for a standard diploma. Uh, but 72% of our students achieve that advanced diploma while in the state the average is 51.5 and 26.1% of our students earn a standard diploma and then a small percentage of our students earn a GED, a certificate or some other um, non-graduate diploma type and that often will um, be a, a certificate of, of completion. The one thing you won't see on our left hand side is this area in red which is 5.6 which represents the dropout rate. Again, one of the really great things about being small and knowing our families and knowing our kids is that we really do try to um, get to know them so well uh, that we bring them into school every day and work with them, uh, meeting their individual needs so we really don't have any dropouts to report in the City of Falls Church. With respect to uh, student achievement in International Baccalaureate, and remember IB for All was a big piece of one of our placemats, uh, big ideas. Um, and, and one thing I want to be clear about is that there are really two ways that students can access the International Baccalaureate program in the City of Falls Church. And the first is through um, going through our PYP program, which is in all of our two elementary schools, Mount Daniel and Thomas Jefferson, um, that leads through inquiry. Um, and that primary year, year's program really helps students explore issues, explore global issues, and get deep into content via the lens of the International Baccalaureate program. So if you are a student at Mount Daniel or at Thomas Jefferson, you are an IB student. Just like when you go on to sixth grade through 10th grade at Mary Ellen Henderson and through the 10th grade at George Mason High School, you engage in the middle years program. And that is a program that continues the framework that students in the primary years were part of, but builds more deeply on becoming creative, critical, and reflective thinkers um, and really builds on their knowledge and skills. So these two programs build on each other 
And if you are in, at Mary Ellen Henderson or in ninth or 10th grade at George Mason High School, you participate in the IB program because that is just part of our programming. Then students have an option after 10th grade to continue with the diploma program. And the diploma program is a wide swath of classes that when pulled together into a program, students can end up getting the diploma. The diploma isn't for everyone. Uh, in fact, um, the IB program isn't for everyone. But what we have committed to within um, IB for All is making sure that all of our students, regardless of the class that they're taking, at least begin to look at the curriculum and content through the lens of international baccalaureate. So it may be a standard level English course, but we're still using the approaches to learning or the approaches to teaching like we would in an IB course. Or students can elect to take one IB course, but maybe not the full complement to become a diploma program candidate. As I shared with the board the other night, my son uh, is in an IB high school, and he is uh, not going to be an IB diploma candidate, but he is taking IB film this year because it's something he's really excited about, and he's taking the History of the Americas IB course. And those will probably be two of three, maybe, courses that he'll take in IB. But he will have had access to that rigorous experience that um, many of our students, we hope, will get. So just in terms of numbers, 86% um, of our juniors and 87% of our seniors are enrolled in at least one IB course last year. And in uh, 2018, 47%, or 47 students were diploma candidates and 40 students earned that diploma. And in 19, 50 diploma candidates and 47 diplomas were awarded. So uh, we see a continuing growth in the diploma, um, but that can fluctuate from year to year based on, uh, based on desire um, and, and um, how much a student is willing to take on. Some other things with respect to student recognition in our schools that we're really proud of, um, you know, you can see the list here, I won't read them, but our students are very well versed in a variety of different things. Um, something else that isn't on here is we have a state championship in Model United Nations, um, which is very exciting, and we recently won um, the state competition in theater. So we have a broad uh, swath of kids, and those kids oftentimes are multi um, multi-club kids, and so they may participate in Give Day or Champions of Character or in elementary school we're in Math Olympiad and Odyssey of the Mind. So for context, we really felt like it was important for us to remember that we are, um, in the context of budget, remembering that we are building a brand new high school um, up the hill. It will open December of next year, um, and we are on time and we are on budget for that to happen. Um, if you haven't been by, uh, if you were to go by, you will see that this um, academic bar or this academic wing is completely, uh, almost completed with steel. And then these two wings are starting to be built right now to connect to the middle school over here. So as you drive from Haycock up uh, Mustang Alley, or the future of Mustang Alley, you'll begin to see this building taking shape. Um, but that is a huge investment by the community. Uh, and we're very appreciative to the community for the commitment that they've made to help us build this high school. And as a consequence of that, we want to be really thoughtful about our budgets going forward. So just in terms of projections, um, how many kids should we be expecting? Uh, and I won't go into the, the details of this too much, but one thing I want to be very clear of up front is that our projections in enrollment are, uh, not, are tied to what we know. Um, so, for example, the Weldon Cooper Center, who does our projections work, looks at birth cohort data and then they look at birth data and then they look at cohort data. So how many kids are moving or matriculating from one grade to the next grade? And from those data, they're able to build out a model to determine what is our um, ultimate projection going to look like for the following year and into the next. The one piece that isn't involved or included in the enrollment projections are new construction. So for example, we have some things that are going on down at um, Founders Row. There's going to be some work done at Broad and Washington. Uh, we know that the new uh, build next to the high school is going to yield some students too. So those are things that we have to pay attention to um, going forward and into the future, but the projections that we get currently don't include those, those numbers. So the decisions that we make today, though, are important for us to think about how they may impact tomorrow uh, and down the line. Um, just in terms of our overall historical enrollments, um, this is 2001, 2002, and this is, uh, this is last year, so, or pr projections for next year, excuse me. So if you look at it, obviously the trend line is up. Um, I would anticipate that this trend line, while it took a dip here, it started to go back up, will continue to go up um, now into the future with the new development that's being built. 
Um, just for uh, your purposes, in case you want to look at this online, these progressions, 